Welcome back to the channel, guys. It is me, AD7104. So today, guys, we'll do my Champions League round of 16 predictions. So I want to know your guys' predictions in the comments below. Let's see how many I can get correct. Hopefully, I can at least get four out of eight correct. As yeah, please remember to like and subscribe. Turn on the notification bell to be notified whenever we go live. And remember, guys, today's like target is going to be 20 likes. Can we get up to 20 likes in this video? Anyways, let's get on with the predictions. So starting with the first game we got here is Copenhagen versus Man City. Copenhagen, man. What an astounding achievement they did to advance the group, advance the round of 16 for the only the second time in their history is insane. Players like Grabari, Grabari was good. Obviously, um, you also got El Nusse has been great. Um, Medling as well. Or Troy as well. This Copenhagen team looks good. Unfortunately for them, though, they're playing against quite possibly the, one of the best teams in the world. Manchester City. Manchester City, defending UCL champions. They had just come off one of the trouble. Manchester City are just too good. Pep Guardiola has done an insane job with the team. And even with the big players losing, like he lost uh, Mara, is obviously Gundogan. He's lost. He's replaced them with Doku. Um, and then obviously got um, uh, Kovacic as well. You know, Vardio as well. So he's let go of some big name players. And he still managed to get the best out of this team. You know, players like Holland is still there. KDB is still there. And I just feel like for me, Manchester City should be able to get past Copenhagen. I, I really, I really hope Copenhagen could do something. But but we all know Manchester City is probably going to win this. So yeah, Manchester City to advance to the quarterfinals. Next up is Leipzig versus Real Madrid. This Leipzig team, you have to give credit to um, how they recruited this summer. Because even though they lost a lot of big players, they lost obviously in Kunku, that was a big one. Uh, Jeska Vardiol, they have been able to replace players like Op with, with Openda. Sesco has been great. Uh, then obviously Xavi Simmons has been a great signing. This Leipzig team plays good football. Defensively is kind of where I have issues with them. I feel like defensively they're not that great. And for Real Madrid, it's Real Madrid. Carlo Ancelotti's done a great job with the team. And you have to give him his flowers and respect. Even I'm saying this even as a rival fan, because this team has been ravaged with injuries. Obviously, uh Courtois is not going to be available. Alaba is not going to be available. And Militao is not going to be available. And the fact he's been able to get results with with relying on players like you know Nacho, you know, Lucas Vasquez, players are like second choice. He's been able to get the best out. And obviously, the big talking point for Real Madrid this season has been Jude Bellingham. The Im impact he's made in his first season here at Real Madrid has been insane. And the amount of goals he has scored has been outstanding. It's been insane. You know, obviously, players like Vinicius has also been great. Rodrigo as well. Brian Diaz has been fantastic. I just feel for me, Real Madrid have too much for Leipzig. Um, the only thing I would say for Leipzig is if they could just make sure their defense is good. If Leipzig's defense is good, we could have ourselves a good game. Although, if Leipzig defense is bad, I really worry for Leipzig in particular. So, I think Real Madrid should be able to advance So to move on to the next round. Next up is Lazio versus Bayern Munich. Maurizio Sarri is doing a decent job with the team. The team is playing great. You know, got back to the Champions League after a while. Players like Chiro Mobley has been great. Obviously, Daichi Kimura, their new signing. This came in the summer. Uh, he's been good for them. Obviously, Provedel has been good as well. And I think for this uh, Bayern Munich team, they've just been fantastic. Thomas Zucco has been doing a great job with this team with Bayern. Byron haven't lost a game in the Champions League so far this season. And I feel like players like uh, Harry Kane's been incredible. Kinsley Coman. Then you got Leroy Sané, Serge Gnabry. This Byron team are stacked, you know. And um, I just feel like for me, Byron have way too much class for Lazio. And I think Byron should be able to get past Lazio with ease. Next up, it is PSG versus Sociedad. Now, this is the matchup where I think there's an upset. This could be it. Because I'll be honest with you guys, this PSG team looks very, very underwhelmed. Because let's be real, other than killing a Vape, what other world class players are on there in this PSG team? Because I'll be honest with you guys, I don't really rate Donnarumma that highly. I don't really rate uh, Kimbempre like that. Guante is decent, to be fair. Um, he's not that special. Fabian Ruiz, nah. Like this PSG team is really mediocre, man. Let's be real here, guys. The, you know, they have that one big player, Kylian Mbappe. He has to be the difference. Because if Kylian Mbappe shows up, guys, PSG can go far in this Champions League. But if he doesn't show up, oh, man, I worry for PSG. Especially in that midfield battle. Because Sociedad, for me, is a really solid team. Their midfield's fantastic. You have Zuba Mendy, Baruk Sissa. Um, obviously, you got Kuba as well. Um, this team is stacked. Like, I think Sociedad, midfield-wise, can outplay PSG. Even though their players aren't as notable as PSG's are. They work really well as a unit. PSG's team doesn't work well as a unit whatsoever. You know, Luis Enrique has not done a great job with the team. Where so the Sociedad coach, he's been a, he's been there for a long time now. I I cannot pronounce his name unfortunately. I'll put his name on the screen. Don't worry, guys. Uh, but I, I just can't pronounce. I'm gonna probably butcher his name. So 
you know, I just think for Sosie Dad, they, what they've done has been fantastic. To top the group with the former Champions League some, uh, finalist is insane. It's a difficult game to call. I could genuinely see an upset, but I'm going to stick with this club because Sosie Dad, for me, their finishing can be a bit dodgy at times. At times, they play great football, but they're not very clinical. That's my issue with Sosie Dad. So if Sosie Dad's clinical, oh man, it's it lights out for PSG. Sosie Dad will get past PSG. Now, if Sosie Dad isn't clinical, PSG can do it. Because Don Roma, for me, as much as I criticize him, I still think he's a decent shot stopper. And I think Mbappe is that difference maker. So I'm going to go with the basis that Mbappe is going to show up. And I think Sosie Dad's going to miss a lot of chances. And for that reason, I actually have PSG to advance to the next round of the Champions League. Next up, it is Inter versus Atletico Madrid. Wow, what a matchup this is. Inter, for me, defensively are stalwarts. You have to give Inzaghi a ton of credit for what he's done with the team because this team is defensively solid. Three at the back. Somber's been fantastic. He's got the, one of the most highest clean sheets in the top five leagues. Pavard's been fantastic as well. And I feel like this Inter team just looks really good. Um, obviously, Marcus Sturman's been amazing. Latar Martinez has been great as well. He's one of the most informed players right now in Europe's top five leagues. And for Atletico Madrid, what makes me really what makes me really happy, Simeon is playing great football. They're playing a really a great attacking football. You know, Griezmann's been amazing, you know. And obviously, Morata has been great as well, you know. And I just like for me with this Atletico Madrid team, they're playing really good football. You know, it's weird though. Atletico Madrid are really good defensively in the past. I would say defensively, they're not as good as they used to be. Now, I don't think his defense is trash by any means. Obviously, it's still good, but it's not as good as it used to be. Whereas Inter, for me, defensively, really solid. This is a difficult one to call, guys. Inzaghi versus Simeone. A very tactical matchup. This could be a very cagey matchup, guys. I, I wouldn't be surprised if it's going to extra times or even penalties. But what makes me worry worried here is that how Inzaghi approaches this one. Will he kind of half-hearted? Because we saw in the group stage, he prioritized the league matches over the Champions League. Especially in the last match, where it was a decisive match, and had if Inter had beaten Sociedad in the final match, right, they would have topped the group, and so it would have been very different. So for Inter, my issue is how much will Inzaghi prioritize the Champions League? Is he not going to prioritize the Champions League, or is he going to go all in for the league? Because he knows he has to win the league, the, the Serie A this season. Whereas Atletico Madrid, they're pretty much out of the La Liga title race. I, it's pretty much going to be between Girona or Real Madrid. So. If they could go far in the Champions League, potentially win it, that could be great for their season. So I think Atletico Madrid, I think Simeone will shift his focus on the Champions League and kind of give up on La Liga. And so for that reason, I actually think Atletico Madrid will prevail here because I think Atletico Madrid will be more focused on the Champions League, whereas Inter, I'm not really sure if they're going to be focused on the Champions League as much. Whatever the case may th be, though, it's going to be fantastic because both teams have a very good record at home this season. I don't think both these teams have lost at home. As you know, Inter have lost at home this season to Bologna and the the uh, the the cup. But um besides that, I don't think they've lost a game at home this season. And Atletico Madrid, they haven't lost a game at home this season at all. So it should be a great matchup. And uh, I'm really looking forward to this matchup. Probably the best matchup of the round. Next up, it is PSV versus Dortmund. PSV, man. What Peter Bosch has done with the team has been great. Because PSV, they're right now first place in the league. I believe they're unbeaten at the time of recording this video. They've been fantastic. Players like Luke Dion has been great. Ricardo Pepe. Serginho Dest, like this PSV team looks really, really good. And I really like how attacking minded this team is. You know, as for Dortmund, this Dortmund team have also been great this season. You know, you have to give them a ton of credit for them to top the Champions League group with PSG, Newcastle, and Milan because many of us thought they would finish bottom. And the fact that they finished top is simply amazing. And I just feel like players like Sebastian Haller has been great. Obviously, Cobal as well. Then you obviously got Marco Royce, Adi Yemi. And then you got Sancho back on the team. Like, this this Dortmund team looks really good. Especially the second leg being at home. I think Dortmund's got this. And I think Dortmund's going to prevail to the next round of the Champions League. And I think PSV, they may just go all in for the league. I don't know how much they're going to prioritize the Champions League. Next up is Porto versus Arsenal. This is a big one. Because Mikel Arteta, even though you guys should be happy... You can't underestimate this Porto team. You can't underestimate Portuguese teams. Sergio Conceição has done a great job with the team, getting the like the best out of the players like um, Mehdi Taremi, Evan Nelson, then Diego Costa. Pepe still there, and this Porto team played great football. It's just that they're not clinical at all for a goal. Obviously, for Arsenal, they have difference makers like Bukayo Saka, Gabriel Martinelli, Odegaard, Declan Rice, Ramsdale, Waya. 
Saliba. Like, this team is stacked for Arsenal. But have Arsenal really been challenged? Because I don't think Arsenal have really been challenged at all in the Champions League season. <laughs> and I think Porto will actually be Arsenal's first real challenge. You know? And I think for Mikel Arteta, you have, to, you, have to, you have to make a decision. Are you going to go for in for the Champions League or go in for the league? Because for me, you can't just go all in for the Champions League and give up in the league. You can't go all in for the league and give up the Champions League. You have to go with a balanced approach. Because I think Arsenal have a good chance to go both. Good chance to go far in both competitions. I'm a good chance to to do well in both competitions. You know, so it's gonna be interesting. So I yeah, this is gonna be a close one, guys. But I do think Arsenal will advance. But if Mikel Arteta does play second eleven, I think Porto advances. But I think Arsenal will advance. And finally, the last match we got here is Napoli versus Porto. Oh my jeez, with Napoli, they have fallen a massive. Walter Mazzari is coming to this team that's going to complete disarray. This team is looking so bad. Uh, they have still got the guys like Kvartskali, Osimhen, and this team just looks completely disjointed. This team looks very, very much not the same team from last season. This team looks like they're just relying on individuals to get them results, and this Napoli team looks complete mess. <laughs> Barcelona, on the other hand, also been very underwhelming as well. We're probably not going to win the league this season. Uh, we're, 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 we, we may not even win a trophy this season. So, for Barcelona, man, what worries me the most is defense. Our defense is really sketchy. Our midfield as well. The fact we don't have a DM uh, just makes me really scared and worried. But I do think we'll get ba- we'll get past Napoli only on the fact that Napoli's just been terrible. Because let's be real, guys. Both teams have been underwhelming. Both teams have been trash this season. It's just a matter of which which one's less trash. <laughs> like let's be real. That's kind of what's kind of come 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 down to. You know, and for Barcelona, man, I hope players like Pedri, Yamal, Lewandowski, Roque steps up. And yeah, man, it's gonna be interesting. So those are my Champions League predictions, guys. Please run a like and subscribe. Of course, let me know your predictions in the comments below. And yeah, check out the pop subscription below, guys. Remember, guys, to join, the, click the join button to get access to members, me, member streams. And yeah, I'll see you guys later, man. Peace out.